Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Maddie Mass. I'm here with Keenan McVeigh and Colson Armstrong. Blue Goose, Lee Valley, Prime Seafood Palace, together forever. It's a big episode today. We're following Keenan from the garden all the way to the city, working with Colson, our chef here at Prime Seafood Palace, the farmer, the chef, me. It's big. Lee Valley, look out. It's coming. Hey everybody, welcome back to Blue Goose Farm. It's harvest day. We're gonna be going into the city tomorrow to deliver to all of our chefs. In particular, we're going to Prime Seafood Palace, which is Maddie's new restaurant downtown. But we got lots to do today, so let's get to it. So as you can tell, there's been a lot of growth in the tunnel. Cherry tomato plants that are probably close to eight feet right now. And some of these really big varieties, we've been dropping them and doing a technique called lower and leaning, giving it more twine and then moving that twine so that the plant can grow a little bit taller. When we trained a tomato to a single stem, we're getting a lot more fruit production. There's not so much leaf production. We're just getting more fruit the more that we prune it. Uh, we do want some leaves so it can photosynthesize, but definitely want to focus in on the fruit. And that's what's happened here. Even if you pick them a little bit before they're ripened, they're going to ripen within a day or two on your countertop. And it's also going to allow the fruit that's on the truss to ripen that much faster. So you're able to speed up the, the ripening of everything else. There's nothing better than tomatoes that are ripened on the vine, for sure. So this is a really special variety of tomato that we're growing this year. It's an ox heart variety that's been bred in Canada by a really amazing breeder named Karen Olivier. Karen, if you're watching, very well done. These tomatoes are incredible. This variety is called Taiga. Hands down, one of the most delicious tomatoes I've ever eaten. Super meaty, there's almost no seed cells inside. As you slice through, it's like a mango. It's a bicolor tomato. The first bite I took, it really kind of set me back in the chair when I was eating because I never had anything like that. It was not like a tomato, more like a tropical fruit. I'm really, really excited to see Colson and Maddie's reaction when we bring these in tomorrow. Just at the trail end of uh, new potato season here, it's time to get the last of them out. PSP has ordered 20 kilos for tomorrow. This is a variety called Siglinda. These were hilled one time early mid-June with some extra compost, and then they were just foliar fed with a spray of compost tea. No added fertilizer or anything like that. We're just kind of letting them do their own thing. And we're gonna be planting some kales for late fall and winter in here. We try not to replant a bed with the same uh, crop or variety, potential for disease and pest pressure. I always recommend to new growers and gardeners Potatoes are for sure the biggest bang for buck, and there's nothing like eating fresh potatoes that you grow yourself. They grow a lot of different stuff, but new potatoes are hands down the most exciting harvest of the year, for sure. All right guys, so as you can see, there's quite a bit going to PSP. This isn't even a fraction of what they're getting this week, actually. New potatoes, tons of tomatoes coming out. We're harvesting peppers today for them. Fresh, tender summer cabbages. It's a lot of edible flowers and some cut flowers as well from our small little flower garden. So I gotta get this all labeled and organized so that tomorrow we can uh, hit the road really quick. So I gotta pack it up and let's go. All right, so we're in Toronto now. So we're going to Prime Seafood Palace. It's Maddie's new restaurant. We're gonna meet up with him and uh, their head chef, Colson Armstrong, who sliced into some of the new tomatoes that we're bringing them today. And we're gonna taste them together and maybe even get to taste the dish. PSP, oddly enough, was one of the reasons that we started the farm to be a place that would supply PSP. With the pandemic coming, kind of delaying things, we started offering our veg out to other people and a bunch of other restaurants in the city, which is great. Prime Seafood Palace definitely has a close place to our heart. Keenan, what do we got here? Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. These mangoes? Mangoes? These are so spicy. spicy. So very spicy. I know, I pickled some last week. Does it look like we took every tomato? No, I still got like 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Second batch of Karabis. Yeah, they're nice. I want a photo of just you guys. Here, stand over there, Colson. That looks so good. These are some of my favorites. Blush, yeah. Blush. So we're gonna do tomatoes three different ways on the menu. Dude, these are I know, they're precious. Beautiful. They're precious. Yeah. And then in front, we have the Careflex cabbage. That one's already on the menu, and we cook four of them a night over the hearth, and we let them get smoky for about three hours, and then we bring them down to the zone two, just over the coals, right. and then really get them cooked, and then we put them on the grill for the last, just got a little char, and then we wrap them in tinfoil, and then on pickup, we just reheat it, and we have a beautiful sauce of anchovies, creme fraiche, Dijon, and uh, confit shallots. Awesome. We're gonna start taking everything inside here, and we got a little space to uh, 
as their little test zone and start cutting some tomatoes Sweet. and getting working. Blue Goose Day, baby. Best, best day of the week. The best day of the week is Blue Goose Day. This is what feeds a lot of beautiful people in a beautiful space by a beautiful person. We're peak summer right now. We want to really take these ingredients and just put it on the plate and, and give it to our guests. That as little as possible. Little as po We're not we don't even... want to interrupt. Thanks, fellas. That's why I love working with you guys. That's why I like working with you. <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. The principles of most dishes are fat, salt, and acids. Those are the main things that your palate is kind of desiring when you're eating food. And we just want to do onion, tomato, oil, and then add a little bit of fat on top with this saucy salm. We're just going to slice it thin. I've never see, really seen a shallot like this before. It looks definitely like a red onion. We're getting a lot of onions from the farm, so we're putting them in our stocks. We're using them as uh, brunoise on our crudo dish, in our vinaigrettes. Everything's kind of getting a really base layer of fundamental here is, is onions in our cooking. Tomatoes are coming in. We were just wanted to do some sliced tomatoes. We got some beautiful Sicilian olive oil, and we just wanted a couple different flavors, textures of tomatoes, all there. So I think that's going to be the salad. That's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. We'll have to figure out how this works. Do we soak the shallot? Do we cut it fresh to order? How to slice these tomatoes properly during service? How do we do this again? How do we do this again? How do we do this again? You will always want things to look very natural. You want things to look kind of fallen from earth. How can we bring people places through food? This is bringing somebody to Blue Goose through PSP, through Colson, through all the chef's hands that are gonna go into this. This is how you Instagram. Is it? Putting that on the, the feed or in the stories? That's, that's, a, that's a feed, maybe. Okay, let's try this. I want to see what everyone thinks. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Just the tomatoes itself. Like, these are, these are insane. Yeah. You just keep going. It's like every tomato tastes a little bit different. Yeah. And then when you need a little onion and a little basil, you go back to that. I like the shallot and the, and the salami. What was this tomato again? That's pink Berkeley tie-dye. Those Pink really, Berkeley tie-dye. That's really good, those ones. Wow. Yeah. That's as good as it gets, right? It's not like you're just getting like tomato and shallot as a bite, tomato and basil as a bite. It's like each tomato can pair with everything else that's on the plate. So there's like probably 36 different bites. When you're and dealing with farmers, you're getting tomatoes that taste like tomatoes. You're getting 15 different types of tomatoes that all taste different. Once again, you don't need to add flavors. The tomatoes are flavor. So yeah, this will go now into production for tonight. Weigh it all into every gram to break down our recipes and then that goes into our menu matrix. This will get costed out and then it gets new menus printed, a debrief on this and let the staff taste it and really talk about all the different types of tomatoes. This again being the first week with tomatoes coming in, the first round, everybody's excited for this and we're just trying to keep it light, fresh and summery. All right guys, thanks for coming by. It's always inspiring getting to see these guys work with the stuff that we got going on. Next time, you guys come around the farm, we got some updates on some of the projects we started earlier in the season, kind of mid to late summer, so it'll be a really busy time. Fall crops will start coming into production, so we'll see you then. Take care.